it's Writer's Row with DC Right Hammer. And David Gain. And this is the fourth episode of Writer's Row, and we're going to be digging into a lot of different topics, but one of the first segments we always do is leftovers from the last episode. In the last episode, we talked about brand building and specifically marketing, <laughs> and I hogged the whole time because I'm a jerk. And so You're not a jerk. I you have, have a lot of, you're passionate, and that's a good thing. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm a jerk, and I wanted to get your take on it for a few minutes um, at the beginning of this episode, give you an opportunity to kind of talk about from your perspective. I know you have you do um, the partner publishing. Um, you do not, you know, you're independent, but with an asterisk to some extent, but still independent. So I wanted to ask you what you think of marketing and brand building. Uh, I, similar to you, I never really thought about it. At the, actually, no, that's that's totally a lie. I did think about it, but because we started as totally self-published, everything like that, I actually was burnt out by the end of doing it mm -hmm. and exhausted. So that's why we ended up going with a partnership publisher, um, just to give me the mind space to be able to think about marketing and that sort of thing. Um, I took a business development course focused around the arts. Uh, so that really helped me think about marketing. And one of the things that I really got out of that was there was a bit of discussion about, um, do you know who Simon Sinek is? I think it's Sinek, Sinek or Sinek? Yeah, Simon Sinek. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Simon Sinek. There we go. So okay. he talks about figuring out what your why is, right? And... When I when you were talking about uh, your uh, brand last week, I mm -hmm. was really thinking about that during the discussion about you know why do you do what you do? Um, mm -hmm. We've really drilled into that question over the past two three years, and we're always kind of tweaking it and trying to figure it out and define it. But lately, I notice the way we communicate ourselves on our website, kunyosengain.com, <laughs> small plug there. Go on. Is a, is a bit about that. So we're trying to always tell our story, um, explain who we are, where we're coming from. I also think a lot about our story and uh, Bernadette, Bernadette Jiwa. Um, mm hmm talks a lot about story about your story and, and communicating that so i've been thinking about that um but the other thing that i thought was interesting in your discussion was that you are an individual who has a presence on twitter but you also have hammerstone creative and i was always kind of wanting to ask you a bit more about that do you separate them or not but one of the, the challenges that Ange and I have had, um, a part of Cunos and Gain, is that with our Twitter and also on our Facebook and on um, a little bit on the website is it was like, how do you how do you present ourselves on these platforms when uh, what what I may want to say or what I may want to reblog or whatever sort of thing can't be communicated that way. So uh, one of the big things that I found over the past couple of months is now that I'm kind of standalone by myself on Twitter, plus I also have the Cunhas and Gain Twitter, it's really been able to open up my voice to be natural and and unique, but not affecting the Cunhas and Gain brand. Sure. Uh, but yeah, so, and then even now that we've got a better sense of who our, our readers are, mm -hmm. we've been building our brand a lot more around that. Even we're doing another series and we were going to do horror and we kind of heard back from our readers that, that well, a couple of our readers, some of our like go-to oh. champion readers, mm -hmm. and they were like, yeah, that's not going to, that's not 
what I'm interested in. And at the moment, we're not interested in in kind of breaking out from who our brand is. So we stayed with with the mystery again okay. instead of going into the horror. So some of those thoughts have kind of crossed my mind since we we last spoke about brands. So yeah. Um... No, I think that's great. And we're going to do future episodes on brand building. So we'll circle back and maybe talk about some of those things as well. Um, but that that's pretty interesting. And I think it's interesting that you have the uh, writing partner. Um, and we'll definitely dig into that. Um, with this episode, we wanted to shift gears. So we talked about the marketing and the business side. We wanted to get back to writing for the fourth episode. So we're going to be alternating like that when we do our episodes something tangentially related to writing and then we want to speak specifically about writing and um can i can i ask really quickly if people do have more questions about brands brand building marketing all that kind of stuff yes put it in the comments down down below below. and i didn't say it at the beginning of this episode but subscribe um i think we're at 22 subscribers right now every one of you matters and um, hit the thumbs up button because it lets us know that you're interested, you like what you're seeing. Um, but definitely comment if you have a question, if you have something you want us to talk about. We're pulling out of a hat right now um, on what we think is interesting, but we want to hear from you. We want to know what you want to hear. So make sure, definitely give us some comments and some feedback. Um, this ep- episode, uh, we wanted to talk a little bit more about character development. So I haven't had a chance to dig in to your series, uh, uh, David, yet. Unbelievable. I, I, I'm I said, fan. I've called myself a jerk before. I'm going to call myself a jerk again. Um, well, I have not been. One is, this one means something, I think. No, 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 I agree. Um, <laughs> I wasn't joking. And I have not been a disciplined reader this year. And um, so, but it is, I do have the first book and I plan on getting the whole series and I do plan on reading and reviewing. Um, because I've heard good things and I see in the background awards and things that you've won. And so, you know, I, I thought about saying, what's your, yeah, yeah, do it. It's, that's what it's for. I know you hate Um, it. So I always do it. I don't hate it. When have I ever said I hate it? (laughs) Um, I think that's really neat. I have no shame. It's not a competition DC though. (laughs) Right. That was the running joke when we first met each other. Um, you win. Okay. Um, I was so when the when we talked about the writing, what, what, what's your writing process like? I hate that question personally because it's like uh, I don't know. Like it 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 just seems like um, not a great question. So I wanted to speak specifically about character development. And so what I was going to ask you is give us a couple of your main characters and talk about you know you, they're like putty to begin with, right? They're just kind of blobs, and you have to actually not only develop them, you have to move a story forward and things like that. So a little bit of an open-ended question, you know, what is your take on character development and, you know, how did you do it in your current series? Let's put it that way. Or, okay. or- so I'm going to, I'm going to give a bit of background history. I think is the easiest way to talk about character development for us, especially with the series. Mm-hmm. So with the first one, uh, Along Comes a Wolf, we actually because we came from script writing originally, right? And both of you then, did. Both of you came we, from script writing. I we did. Yeah, we, okay. we wrote. Um, I think I can't remember. I always forget the number. I think it was like seven scripts or something like that, plus the ten that I had written before that sort of thing. And uh, so, so we we've been working for a while, and then uh, in my in my hometown. The, the film industry, which I was a part of, completely collapsed, um, imploded because uh, uh, most for I'm sorry, this is like a tangent, but uh, yep. most in, of the film industry, a lot of it requires tax credits given to the production. Our government took away all the tax credits, so that kind of <laughs> finished off the industry. So I was in my master's program. I came out of it the industry that I was taking my master's in was gone pretty well. And, uh, but I had taken uh, my fiction writing class and I really Mm -hmm. enjoyed it. So I came out and I said, Ange, let's, let's just try and write a novel. So we tried to write one based on an old script. 
that we had that we liked. Um, it it's to me it's stand by me and it was the biggest issue that I had with it. Like it wasn't exactly like stand by me, but it felt like stand by me. Okay. So I think we did about two weeks on it. I said, are you enjoying yourself? And she said, no. And I said, neither am I. So then we got together and started working on the Shepherd and Wolf series. I knew that I wanted a series. I knew I wanted it to be like a mystery series of some type. And uh, I think that's all we really knew going in. Okay. And so we just started building from that. And I think we began with our villain originally. We knew that we wanted, since we knew it was a mystery, we, need, we needed a killer. Who was the killer? What was the kind of crimes? Everything like that. And built it from there. And then once we had that, and we really just said, okay, this is who the person is. This is the kind of murdering they do. And this is the type of vi victims they go for. Because um, I'm always interested in the why of any character, which yep. is funny because I just talked about why of brand building. Yep. Um, but then, uh, sorry, I'm looking off at my stories just off the camera there. <laughs> yep. um, so. Once we had that, then I we were like, who are the who are the the people who are solving this? I knew we wanted it to be teenagers um, and kind of go for the YA market because well, when we first started, it was going strong. I have two teenagers uh, at the time. Well, they weren't they weren't both teenagers at the time, but they were getting into that. And I just wanted to write something that my kids would enjoy and my wife would enjoy because that was the other thing is that I always tend to write too serious and not fun. So I just wanted to give my kids and my wife something fun and enjoyable. So that's kind of the jumping off point. And so my writing partner, who's a high school teacher, is a resource of information. She kind of brought... Um, the two characters into the fold she she would what the way and this is talking a bit about process but what tends to happen is i will ask Ange questions and mm -hmm. she will answer the questions and i'm i'll be like yeah i like that or i don't like that and we keep on working on that so that's how story is kind of workshopped in our in our room in this room literally um, there's on our old YouTube channel, there's like a video of me just pacing around because that's the way we workshop. Okay. Um, and so we knew who our characters were in very broad strokes. But then this is my, my issue about when you talk about character development and plot progression. And I told you I was going to get on a rant before we got into this. Go is on. that I, I actually don't like character, the, the idea of character development, because I've always felt it. And I, I'm going to I'm going to preface this saying I know some people who do this work and love it and it's great and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I always have found it busy work. I find um, when I used to teach script writing and, you know, I'd be doing like I'd be doing the research and figuring out what's out there. Um, what people would suggest and everything like that. And there's like these exercises where it's like 25, 50 questions of like um, birth date, name, job, right. home life, jo uh, uh, personal history, what is, what's in their wallet and everything like that. Right. And I hated it because it always felt like busy work because to me, the process allows you for you to answer those questions right you're working along you have to make a choice so for me uh character is always about action and action is always defined by choices um action and reaction right so um that and and this is coming to me for plot to me characters and plot are the exact same thing so you have a character who wants something they take actions to get the things that they want. The world around them reacts. They respond to that response, and they'll keep doing it until they get the thing that they want. So, and the one thing I also skipped out on was obstacle, right? So there's there's a want, 
there's an obstacle in the way, so the character has to take an action to get around to the obstacle. The obstacle responds, and this keeps on going back and forth until you get to an outcome. So to me, the goal is always, what does the character want? What is the obstacle in the way? And then what are the kind of actions that these characters are going to take? Because uh, a character, for, uh, and I, when I'm talking about this to my students, I always am like, you know, two characters both want money, for example. One dude is going to go and rob a bank, and that's how he's going to get money. And that's, that's in his head, that's his choice to do that thing, right? And that defines him immediately. But then also there is the character who is going to go work a nine to five, nine to five job, mm -hmm. day in, day out, follow the rule of the law, and that's how he's going to do it, right? Those are both choices and paths that these characters take. And you can, you can shift that by changing the choices that a character takes. You know, you have the nine to five guy who's doing that. And then he's like, this is taking too long. I want to get it faster. So I'm going to go rob the bank, that sort of thing. So for me, character and plot are the exact same thing. Hmm. And I, 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 cause I'm, I'm a man full of opinions. I will, I, I will fight that, uh, that belief. Uh, for a long time. So when I teach script writing to my students, because I still teach script writing, but uh, I, we always start at let's let's do the basics of story. And as we build on story, then we're going to get characters coming out of it immediately, right? If you have a strong want, you have strong actions um, and strong responses then then you've got like a really good story but of course you also need that obstacle which is really just it is somebody who also has a strong want and strong actions and those two things come head to head and that's like that's my favorite part the thing that makes me so excited about story is always the dynamic between action and response because it's so like there's so much tension there there's so many things that can happen. Um, it's so unpredictable uh, with what characters um, and and uh, will do. So uh -huh. early on, before we started this show, we were talking. You asked me, like you mentioned, protagonist and antagonist, and you know, I, I will talk about those terms and everything like that. But I always love, I love. Uh, the idea that, you know, the bad guy doesn't ever think they're the bad guy, right? They think they're the hero right. in the story. And I love doing that, where you bring those two things together. Yeah, I, I, well, I think, uh, I think in that sense, we're, we're sort of similar, at least in my first pass. When I write a story, I'm not actively like, and how am I going to develop the character next? Like, I don't ask myself those questions, but... What I found with revisions of book one and revisions of my second book that I look at the context of the story. So it's almost it's, so it's after the fact. I've probably gotten my first draft out and I've said what I wanted to say and I've taken the story where I wanted to go. But if I look at chapter one and I look at the last chapter and I say there's not a whole lot there. There's a lot of obstacles and there's a lot of overcoming of them. But what as a you know, I write. Um, character driven sci-fi thrillers they're really adventures it's taking you from one point and going to another and so while I'm doing that and those obstacles are appearing and we're either overcoming them or they're affecting us in some way the characters um, are they the same or have I not you know to some extent I'll, I'll look back and say have I even revealed who this character is? Sure, I've shown you how they re respond, but we've got a moment of downtime. Are they snarky? Are they this or that? It gets yeah. a little bit back to what you were saying with, I've and I've never gone through what's in their pockets and what are the you know what are they? But a lot of that actually comes out with um, my brand of writing and my brand of storytelling, which is what are they? What's in their homes? What are they seeing when they wake up? What are they seeing? 
when they're dropped into a scene, when the reader's dropped into a scene, what, what's their scene? And so I do a lot of first person or third person limited. And so by, by the nature of that writing style, you are seeing how they interpret the world. And to me, that's yeah. as important as obstacles and overcoming them. The little things in between fills in the gaps, fills in the person side of these characters, makes them less like animatronics, makes them less like pieces of the story. And they actually, like you said, they should be the plot. They should be one and the same with the story. Because if you can separate those two, oftentimes the reader is going to separate those two and it's going to be disjointed. So I think we don't disagree very much there. I'd like to add the grout. I'd like to add the filling in between that is very important to me that really fleshes out the human side. Like, what is the villain doing when nobody's looking? What is the villain? What, what, what remark are they doing? I had a scene in my second book where a villain stares out and sees all these people. Uh, it's the, uh, the afternoon rush hour and he sees all these people and he gets nauseous looking at this sea of people. Like, that was just a really quick scene, but it was my way of showing that he, you know, and, and it's nuanced. And the reader might not necessarily pick up on it, but that he's not a very good guy. He's looking at a sea of people and he gets nauseous like that is something in him. And then he goes on and does that. That's response. No, I agree. But there was no obstacle. Seeing the people wouldn't necessarily perceive, you know, and it wasn't important to the plot, but. I had to put him in a position where I could describe him and describe his office, where he was and what he looked like and what he was doing. And this Watch. was just one little piece. Like, um, I'm, not, I'm not fighting this. I'm just curious. Uh, what made you want to do that? Um, later on in the book, I had to do the same thing for another character to draw a parallel with what he was doing versus this other character. My cat really loves this chapter in that book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, anyway. I agree, DC. <laughs> right. Um, and so, you know, some people would say that that's, you know, and, and you have to control that, right? Because you can't have darlings, um, which uh, to people who don't know, it's small little stories that you write because they're fun rather than because they need to be part of the book. You just go on a tangent. I need this cat to stop, but she won't. Um, anyway, um, I, I tend to like the little stuff. Um, if you look at, maybe not from books, but, well, Stephen King, I think, does a good job of that, where he'll have little um, actions that, that characters will do just to kind of make them feel more like real people. Um, Quentin Tarantino was much better at that early on when he was directing movies, where they he would have his characters do these odd things say things in an odd way you know have these very almost caricature like feelings to them um but that added something to the story above and beyond the plot it was these crazy characters inside this interesting story so i but think they're... they were always servicing the story so is my argument is that everything was there usually those moments are there still to drive the story they're moving the story forward um you know, a character is in a space, they're responding to that space. That space has meaning to what they're doing in the grander scheme of the story, right? Mm -hmm. um, and for, like, for example, in um, our second book, it feels like we kind of delve a lot more into our characters. But on the flip side, the quiet moments that are not like, okay, we got to always be finding the serial killer um, are, are moments where the characters are trying to either solve the problem mm -hmm. or they're trying to deal with the situation that they've been placed into. Right. So once you put them into those situations, then they are going to take actions that are going to express themselves or take, have responses that express themselves. So, mm -hmm. I still will argue that as long as it's continually moving that story forward, it's okay. The, I think the, the two places that people um, always, <laughs> that was a close one. Uh, the two things that uh, I think I always find when I'm reading my students writing is either they are adding a thing that 
hat serves no purpose, right? right? It's just, it's a tangent that needs to be cut and pruned and cleaned up. Or the other thing is, is that they have no moments for a character to even think or respond. And in those moments, by adding it, you, you are building in more of who your character is. Mm-hmm. So even that, that moment of your character looking down, they're, they're, it's, they may not seem like they're engaged in the story. And I, I to be honest, haven't read book two, right? So sure. I, I'm doing this without knowing really, really well. Maybe I'll read and be like, yeah, DC, you should have cut that. <laughs> um, yeah, you probably but, will. But I, I always think that there's these opportunities of, they, they always call them campfire scenes or bar scenes in script writing. Um, where it's the the moments, the discussions around food, or or just sitting around a fire, or having a beer, or something like that, where things are happening, things are occurring in that story, um, but it may not be directly in line. And then the other thing is, you are building up other layers to that story. There's the main storyline, but then there's other storylines. Plus, there's and I haven't really talked about it, but there's the external storyline and the internal storyline. Each of these characters have something that they want that's been driving them far before your story started yeah. and continue driving them. Um, and I I'm, I'm, know we're probably running long on time, but I really want to get into this really quickly, which is, you know, we have maybe seven big, big goals in our life that drive us from beginning to the end, right? And those are the things that... I think are really about character de- development. So um, it's still about want, it's still about obstacle, it's still about taking actions and all that sort of stuff. So I almost feel like maybe those moments that you're talking about are really the internal storyline that's, sure. that's running through it. So Yeah, um, and honestly, I started writing i did take writing classes i don't like i i don't think we have enough time on this show but i'd be interested in the difference between script writing and the difference between book writing because in script writing like i i don't know i only know what i i've heard and that there, you're not doing a ton of like scene setting and things like that it really is drive driven by the script driven by what people are saying and what they're doing and things like that to some extent but i know you also don't want to step on the toes of the director you don't want to step on the cinematographer you don't want to you know like it's very much like everyone has a role um and i'd like to get into that in future episodes for sure um i think we're probably at a good time now to do the shameless self-promotion side of Right. We put in all this effort, um, but as we're doing it, remember to subscribe to the channel, like this episode, give us a comment on what you want to hear about, what you like, what you dislike, what you want to hear more about, and go from there. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to hand it off to David for a okay. motion. Uh, you can always find me through www.cunosandgain.com, which is down in the diddly doos, right? We'll put it down there. And uh, this week, I'm going to promote Read Like a Mofo, which is one of our T-shirts and stickers that we have. We also have Write Like a Mofo. Um, There's a lot of other mofo versions that I want to put out. (laughs) So buy them so that we can do those. Um, But we have have T-shirts, we have stickers, we have our own books but we also have books of other authors including dcs and uh we hopefully will be having another author popping up very very soon very cool and, um yeah what about you dc uh so i'm a little more shameless self-promoting and this is book one between two minds awakening if you read it and you find that my character v- development sucks put it in the comments below um <laughs> You are just opening up. I want to uh, promote uh, Fur Lodge by Sean McMahon. Uh, he's a buddy of mine on Twitter. Uh, I This is another book that I'm a jerk and I haven't actually read myself yet. 
I've heard great reviews. He just put out a second book. So I just wanted to give him a little plug on the end of this episode to let him know um, that, hey, I'm, I'm, it's on my list. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read book two. Um, I'll put a link in the description below so you can pick up a copy of it on Amazon um, and go from there. So we'll, you we'll have do the physical that. book. I do not have the physical book. I think I have it on my Kindle. If I don't, I will buy it. That's a promise to okay. Sean right there. You owe yeah. him some money. Um, so Yeah. 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 All right. And with that, appreciate it again. Subscribe, like, comment down below. We appreciate everybody who's watched this long. We really do. So thank you so much. And have a good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.